how to access your pension, defend yourself from the tax man. Short disclaimer, the objectives here are to minimize income tax, maximize the tax free cash we have available to us, minimize the lifetime allowance charge, maximize the utilization of personal allowance and enjoy life. So it's a lot of things to do at the same time. And in this video, I'm gonna explain how it could all work for you. So minimizing income tax, well, to do that, first of all, you take from a taxable savings account in retirement and the new lower limits on dividend income and capital gains make this a very sensible thing to do. And then generally you want to take from an ISA before your SIP. To maximize the personal allowance, you need to have a plan as to how you will utilize your personal allowance, especially prior to state pension age. Living 100% from an ISA could be leaving money on the table. And if you don't have any other income and you are eligible to take from your SIP, you can just use your SIP to fill up your annual allowance. Don't recycle from a pension to an ISA. So it's not the same thing as moving a lasagna from a freezer to a fridge where it's the same lasagna. The problem is that the tax man is possibly gonna take 20%, maybe less, maybe more from the lasagna. And so no wonder he's so fat. So if this is your SIP, this is your ISA, this is your cash, then what he's gonna do is say, well, is that gonna attract any income tax when you take down from the SIP? And if it does, then you've got a permanent loss of wealth in terms of that tax. So trying to reduce your SIP balance so that you stay under the lifetime allowance by maybe taking from it early can lead to higher taxes being paid earlier and a permanent loss of wealth that will compound over time. So if your investments are growing by more than inflation, then paying tax early might not be beneficial. Maximizing your tax-free cash. So the options you have here are, you can take your tax-free cash up front, you can take the tax-free portion only when you take income from your pension, and that's called UF Plus, or you can phase how you take the tax-free cash according to what your needs are, and that's called Flexible Access Drawdown or FAD. And if your pension is not in drawdown, if you take the tax-free cash only, so you can still make meaningful contributions to, to top up your pension. So taking 25% tax-free cash upfront. Well, your pension is supposed to last you 30 years and maybe longer if you want to pass it on in inheritance. So why blow 25% of it in year one? Now you might want to do something like pay off a mortgage if interest rates are rising and stock market returns are low. But is too much of your wealth tied up in a house and then the house costs you money and probably doesn't earn you any income. So your house is the Pac-Man and it's eating your pension, which is not a good idea. Other things to consider, well, maybe the tax-free proportion might not exist in the future. I'd never say never, but I think this is highly unlikely. And if it does change, you will get sufficient notice to put your pension into drawdown. So looking at flexible access drawdown versus of plus before your state pension age. So in this example, someone's got 400,000 in their SIP and they want to get 20,000 pounds out of it. If they use flexible access drawdown, they take 80,000 pounds out, 60,000 gets moved into a drawdown account, 20,000 is a tax-free amount that goes straight to them. And because they've not actually touched the drawdown account, then they've still got a £40,000 annual allowance. If they use UF Plus, then they're going to end up paying income tax of £572. So they need to take out £20,572. 25% of that's tax-free. 
but the taxable income is greater than the personal allowance and so they get income after tax 14,857 and then there they've got the total amount received 20,000. They can only put 4,000 pounds a year gross going into their pension going forwards because they have actually touched their um, draw, they put the pension into drawdown. Now a spreadsheet makes this clearer once you can see the calculations and if you want to access an article about all this here's a web link and you have to click that you're an advisor but don't worry about that. To minimize the lifetime allowance. So the maximum impact of a lifetime allowance is 55% if you're paying a 40% marginal income tax rate and it's 40% if you're only paying a 20% marginal income tax rate. And 40 isn't really too bad. You need to put together a plan for withdrawing from your SIP such that you don't ever pay 40% marginal tax. And having an ISA might help with this if you sometimes need to access more money. The lifetime allowance is a tax on asset growth. It's a tax on success. So don't be so worried about paying it. If you're in your 30s and want to retire before the age you're eligible for your SIP, you're going to need to have money somewhere else, ideally in an ISA. But you don't want to be putting money into an ISA if you're a 40% marginal taxpayer and you've not utilised your full SIP allowance each year. So you need to start planning early. And I'll do a video on this and when it's done, I'll put it in the link here. But you really need to look at how you're accumulating your wealth and sequence it correctly. Also, don't put some of your SIP into low uh, interest rate things, bonds or cash, purely to have lower lifetime allowance charges. You want to remain with a healthy investment strategy and if you get the asset growth and have to pay more tax then really again this is just being successful. So it sounds like for all this I need a spreadsheet. Well yes I would agree I'll put a link to my video that explains my spreadsheet here and uh, in the description I'll put some links as to how you can get hold of it. A small change in inputs can lead to a big change in things like wealth or tax paid because things can compound over time and with a spreadsheet you can look under the bonnet and see what's really going on and with a black box website you just can't do this also with a spreadsheet you permanently own the data and the cost can mount up over time with other solutions where you don't own the data here's some output from my spreadsheet so this is looking at sources of income in retirement, how you're taking from an ISA, how the SIP is uh, filling up as well, um, and then the state pension kicking in too, and then the wealth by type over time, what you've got in taxed investments, ISA and SIP. Now it's a little known fact that Snoop Dodd is a tax-free rapper and inventor of the ISA. So we've got Snoop Dogg, who raps and smokes weed, and Ken Dodd, who paid no tax on his cash in the attic. So when you think of a tax-free rapper, I always think of these guys, and it just makes me smile a little bit. So avoid reading the news. Most are clickbait articles and speculation, and trying to guess changes to legislation is probably not a good idea. Your initial withdrawals of taxable cash uh, will be taxed as though you're going to take the same amount every month for the next 12 months. So it's assuming you're making 12 withdrawals, not one. That's okay if that's exactly what you're doing, but if you're trying to live off of 12 months of expenditure in one withdrawal, you could end up being overtaxed and then you've got to fill in some forms to claim it back. So be very careful how you're actually accessing your SIP. Try and take regular monthly drawdowns from your SIP. There's an order of drawdown in retirement. So first of all, state pension, if you're eligible, 
then in most cases defined benefit pension if you've got one and if you're eligible for it uh, so these two are contractual then you've got buy to let side hustle additional income so that will be taxable and that's just kind of already there then you can use your SIP if you've got any remaining personal allowance after that so up to the so you pay no income tax then you can use a general savings account because it's subject to dividend and capital gains tax then you use an ISA then SIP up to your 20% tax band and then last SIP up to your 40% income tax band so if you are paying 40% tax on your SIP then you need to think carefully about what's going on with all your different sources of wealth so in summary and these are just general rules put together a plan to take from your SIP in a slow and steady manner unless you have specific dreams that you want to fulfill and in which case screw the tax go for the dreams once your personal allowance is utilized only take from your pension if you intend to spend the money otherwise you're paying tax when potentially you don't need to for the lifetime allowance you're most likely to fail the age 75 te test if you do actually pay anything um, but as this is a long way in the future for a lot of people trying to lower this tax charge may result in a suboptimal outcome for your overall wealth because you're trying to second guess something that's potentially going to come in 20 30 years time observe the order of drawdown that i've explained and consider using flexible access drawdown particularly in the early years of retirement so i hope you've liked the video subscribe to the channel let me know any comments you've got and i'll see you next week